Let me ask you, uh, this election for New York City is going to be a little different. It's a ranked choice voting for the first time uh, being done here in, in the nation's largest city. So I was hoping you could talk to us just a little bit about how that works. But more than that, provide also just a snapshot of where the race stands right now. Andrew Yang, the former presidential candidate, he's sort of been atop these polls barely. Uh, Eric Adams, who's the Brooklyn Borough president, a former police officer, he's African-American. He seems to be in second place in most places. And then Catherine Garcia, who we just mentioned, who's a longtime you know, worked for the city, basically ran, ran the Department of Sanitation. Uh, there seems to be a little buzz around her right now who picked up the endorsements of both the New York Times, but also the New York Daily News, which plays well uh, in those working class communities we were just talking about. Well, that's exactly right, Jonathan. Uh, this uh, ranked choice voting initiative that passed uh, in New York City over the last couple of years is really going to scramble the race in a major way. What ranked choice voting does is rather than a voter voting for a single candidate, what they're able to do is rank their top five candidates in order of preference. Uh, and what happens is that candidates are eliminated who, uh, you know, so you look at the first round, you look at people's first choice votes. If you don't get a majority of voters that support one candidate, you eliminate the least vote-getting candidate. And then if you eliminate their voters, uh, what happens is those voters' preferences get reallocated to their second choice. So what that means is that in an election uh, like this one, it's a very crowded race. Uh, a lot of candidates don't have high name identification, aren't well known. What that means is that uh, it's really going to favor candidates who are well known by a large number of voters. Uh, and it's also interestingly going to be favor. Uh, it's also going to favor candidates who uh, have voters who understand how to use ranked choice voting, who understand what, what we just talked about there, uh, because they will preference voters uh, in a way that uh, preference candidates rather in a way that will benefit, uh, you know, the, the candidates that they uh, prefer. So as you look at this race, as you mentioned, Andrew Yang's done very well in polling in the early part of this race, predominantly because he, uh, you know, he ran for president. He was very well known. He had sky high name ID. About 80 percent of these uh, registered Democrats in New York knew who he was. A lot of these candidates were lesser known. But I think as the race is maturing in these last couple of weeks, as you mentioned, Eric Adams has crept up in the polls. Uh, and there, there's a major reason for that, which is that he's the Brooklyn borough president. Uh, it's a very sizable portion of the Democratic primary electorate that lives in Brooklyn. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, he's a candidate of color. Um, and in a ranked choice voting system, uh, that can be a major advantage uh, because there are going to be a sizable portion of the Democratic primary electorate, about a third, that are going to be black voters. Uh, and those voters uh, heavily uh, advantage uh, Eric Adams. So, uh, gentlemen, this is Michael Steele here. A, a lot of talk about Democrats. And New York's a Democratic city. We get it. Understand that. Are there Republicans in the race? What do they stand? What are their chances here? Particularly given ranked choice voting, because it is it is opportunity for it to be a great level of the partisan sort of baggage that tends to come in the races in cities like New York and Baltimore and elsewhere, where um, you know you're outnumbered as a Republican. I grew up in Washington D.C. <laughs> you know, ten to one. Yeah, okay, whatever. You just you know just passed through the election. Um, so how do how do you assess the Republican? field here such that it exists and and their possibility of being competitive in this system if not in this race but in future races with ranked choice voting well that, that's a really interesting question michael because uh unfortunately uh or fortunately what you find is that in this race uh, the Republicans really don't have a voice unless they're registered as Democrats. Uh, New York City has a closed primary system, which means that if you're not registered as a Democrat, uh, you can't participate in this election that's going to choose the next mayor of New York in the defining election, that June primary. Uh, the deadline for changing your party registration if you wanted to participate in the Democratic primary was February 14th. It was a long time ago. Uh, New York City there's seven times more Democrats than there are Republicans uh, these days. And what that means is that coming out of this June 22nd election, you're, you're really going to know who the mayor is just based on that partisan split. Uh, and the reality is a lot of voters don't understand that. Uh, in our polling, what we've seen is we asked really two questions to understand whether voters understood how this election was going to be decided. The first question was which, which election matters, the primary or the general, uh, this election in June or the election in November. Second question we asked was how are you going to vote? Are you going to use ranked choice voting, standard voting? How is this election going to be operated 
it was two-thirds of voters who could not answer those questions correctly and were just a few weeks out from the election.